Hello our viewers, previously on our discussion we have tried to see about dynamics, the main concept of dynamics, we have tried to see about different laws of motion. We have seen about the first law of motion or the law of uh, inertia and we have also seen the second law and the third law. The second law of motion is known to be the law of acceleration and the third law of motion is known to be the law of action and reaction. We have also tried to see about frictional force and solve some uh, problems. At last I have given you one example or, and then give you an assignment or homework. So I think you have tried to solve these problems. Now let's try to solve it together. Suppose here you have a 6 kilogram mass and a 4 kilogram mass are attached like this. And the pulleys are said to be, let's say, massless and frictionless pulleys. Suppose here 6 kilogram mass is released from at height of 2 meter and released. Then it's moving and downward as it strikes the ground. It says what is the velocity of the mass as it strikes the ground. It also asks you about how long it will it take to reach to the ground. So to solve this problem, first thing you should have to is how to determine the free body diagrams. Here, as this object is moving downward, there will be a reaction force at the uh, tension or at the string. Let's say that this is mass 1 and let this be mass 2. So as mass 1 is released, there will be a downward force due to its weight, it's known to be M1G. While it's moving downward, there will be a reaction force or it tends to react oppositely by the tension T here. Then, after it moves here, this object starts to move upward. Upward. This object is moving upward because of the tension formed here. Here you have the tension T. And there is a force which is acting oppositely, and that force is the mass times gravity, M2G. M2G is acting downward, while tension T is acting upward. So, your concept is to find the free body diagram of each uh, mass so that you can find the net acceleration. Why are we needing the net acceleration? Because that as this object is initially released, it is velocity, initial velocity is zero. This object has a height of two meter. So to find the final velocity, you should have to remember and apply the law of kinematics. In kinematics or in unit theory, we have seen that the final velocity squared is equal to velocity initial squared plus 2as. Okay? This is how we use this equation. In this case, we should not have to use gravity because the gravity is using if the object is released or if the object is free from a system. This object is moving in a system or like a system. Therefore, you should have to use acceleration. For example, if you cut this, it's free from the system so that you might use gravity. But this object is accelerating due to the acceleration of the system so that you use A. And here you have H, H. therefore V final squared is equal to the initial velocity since it is released is zero, it is twice of acceleration times the height H. So the only variables left to find the final velocity is acceleration A. We have the height, 
and then it's possible to find the final velocity. So how do we determine the acceleration? In dynamics, we have learned that it's possible to find the acceleration as a system using a free body diagram of this mass and this mass. So taking these two bodies, you have mass one, which is six kilogram acting downward, M1G, it's acting upward, there is a tension T. And the other mass is, there is an upward force, tension, there is a downward force, M2G. For both objects, you have to apply the law of dynamics or the law of acceleration, which is mass times acceleration. In this case, we have mass one, so mass one times acceleration A. And the net force is appears due to that, there is a force which is acting downward, M1G. There is a reaction force acting upward. So M1G minus the tension T is equal to M1A. But here, again, we should have to apply the net force. We should have to defer the mass, mass two times acceleration A. And the net force appears due to the tension and the, the weight. The weight is acting upward, but the tension is acting upward. This object is moving upward so that we should have to put tension first. So tension T, the reaction force or the, of the force which opposes tension is M2G is equal to M2A. Therefore, we can equate these two equations so that we can find the acceleration. So M1G minus tension T is equal to M1A. Here you have tension T minus M2G is equal to M2A. We should have to add these two. Here M1G, we have M1G. And here you have the negative tension and the positive tension are cancelled out to each other. Minus M to G is equal to, we should have to add these two. We do have a common acceleration, mass one plus mass two, as a whole acceleration A. This is how we determine the acceleration. So here you have mass one minus mass two times gravity as a common G. And you can find the acceleration. Mass one is six kilogram. And here we have mass two, which is four kilogram, four kilogram. So we can have minus four kilogram times gravity is 10. And when you add these two, you have six plus four gives us 10, 10 A. We can cancel 10 by 10, six minus four. The acceleration itself is two meter per second square. So we have the acceleration two meter per second. After all this, it's possible to find the final velocity because that we have said from kinematics, the final velocity squared is twice of acceleration A times height H. So V final is equal to square root of, we have found our acceleration to be two, two. The height is already given to be again two. So we can take the square root of this and it is two root two. 2 root 2. So the final velocity can be given as to root 2 meter per second. This is how we determine the final velocity. So this was that I have given previously. I hope you have found it correctly. So it's also possible to find the time t using v final is equal to v initial plus a t. So the initial velocity is 0. The final velocity you have already found it to be 2 root 2. In the acceleration, we have found this 2 times t. So the time it took is now, we can cancel out 2 by 2, root 2, which is 1.41 second. So the time it took for this mass to reach at the ground is 1.41 second. I hope you have also found the answer of this. And then let's proceed for today. Today, we'll try to see about the linear momentum. Okay, we'll try to see about momentum. There are two types of momentum. There will be an angular momentum for rotating objects, and there will be a linear momentum for objects which are moving linearly. Previously in unit four, we have tried to see that there are different properties of massive bodies. For a massive body, we can have inertia. Inertia is a tendency to continue state, and mass has also other property called momentum. Momentum is the other property of massive body. Momentum is the tendency to exert force 
on an obstacle or on a given obstacle. Suppose this object is in a state of motion. Let's say that it's moving with a velocity v. Here and here we might have a different other object uh, or mass. On that obstacle, we might exert. This object might exert a force. Okay, this object is in a state of motion. If there is obstacle or if there is another mass, this object can exert a net force on that mass. This property or tendency is known to be momentum. And this momentum is known to be linear for an object moving linearly. We can consider it to be a linear momentum. And mathematically, we can determine linear momentum as the final velocity is equal to the initial velocity plus a times change in this. There will be an acceleration change due to a velocity change. So v final is equal to v initial plus a t. We can uh, translate it here. V final is equal to minus v initial is equal to acceleration times change in t. Let's try to multiply both sides by mass m. This is uh, an object having mass m, and it is a property of massive bodies. If you are trying to multiply both sides by mass m, m times the final velocity minus m times the initial velocity, and if you multiply with mass here, mass times acceleration gives us force. We know that mass times acceleration is force times change in t. So mass times velocity final minus mass times velocity initial is equal to f times change in t. This, the quantity on the right side, which is the difference of mass times velocity, final and initial, is known to be momentum. Mathematically, momentum is expressed as the product of mass and velocity. Mass and velocity is known to be momentum. Vectorially, we can possibly express it using m times v, where v is a vector so that the momentum itself is also a vector. It's a vector quantity and its unit can be determined using that the SI unit of mass is kilogram, the SI unit of velocity is meter per second. So kilogram meter per second is SI unit of momentum or it's also possible to have another unit. You can multiply with this by one. Second over second is one. So when you multiply this, second with second gives you second squared. Putting this second here, kilogram meter per second squared is Newton here. So Newton second is other unit for momentum. So momentum has a unit kilogram meter per second or equivalently expressed as Newton second. So momentum is a vector quantity. Note that velocity can be expressed vectorially as velocity along x in the i direction, velocity along y in the j direction, plus velocity along the z direction. If velocity is expressed using vector notation form, it's also possible to express momentum using vector notation form. Putting those on velocity v, you can have a momentum along x, m v x i, m v y j, and m velocity v z. Okay, the only thing, if you multiply with this with mass, so you can find the momentum component along x, y, z. And here, m velocity final means the momentum final, m velocity initial means the momentum initial is equal to force times change in time t. So mv final is the momentum final minus momentum initial. Here it tells us the difference in momentum. The difference in momentum is equal to force times change in t. So the difference in momentum is equal to force times t. And the difference in momentum is known to be impulse. We call it to be a linear impulse. So linear impulse can be expressed using j. Linear impulse can be given as force times change in t or it is the difference in momentum, the difference in momentum. So keep this in your mind and let's try to solve one example. What is the momentum of a linear momentum or the linear momentum of a mass given by four kilogram? Okay, what is the magnitude of a linear momentum? And here we have four kilogram mass. And the velocity is given to be the negative of four in the i plus three j minus k meter per second. So let's try to solve it together. What are the given quantities? Well, the given quantity is the mass of the object, mass, and the mass of the object is four kilogram. And the velocity v is minus four in i plus three in the j 
minus k. We are asked to find the magnitude of the linear momentum. The magnitude of the linear momentum required, we can find the momentum p. Solution, to find the momentum p, we have defined that momentum is a vector quantity. It is all the product of mass and velocity. Mass is a scalar quantity. We just multiply the scalar quantity with a velocity v. And mass is 4 kilogram, and we can have v. v is 4 in the i plus 3 in the j minus k. So you can multiply these two. 4 times 4 gives us 16 in the i. 4 times 3 is 12 in the j. And 4 times minus 1 is minus 4 in the k. This is momentum. This is the momentum. And these are the momentum along x. These are the momentum along y. And this is the momentum along x, the component of the momentum. But here we, we are asked to find the momentum, the magnitude of the momentum. The magnitude of the momentum is determined from your vector concept. We know that it's given like this. The component each must be squared so that you can determine the magnitude. And that is 16, the whole squared, plus 12, the whole squared, plus minus 4 or negative 4, the whole squared is how we determine the magnitude. So that the magnitude of the momentum can be determined in Newton second, or you might give it using kilogram meter per second square. So this is one example of momentum. I think you can find um, different exercise on your books and solve for different examples. So this is all that I have got for today. Next time we'll try to see about the law of conservation of linear momentum and we'll try to see some of the applications of momentum. Bye bye for today.